let's get rolling here. Uh, first question, I was just wondering, uh, yes, it's Lee Irving. We get a lot of questions. Why is he here? Could he go to the AHL? Uh, what do you see with him? You get questions? I do get questions, actually. <laughs> and, and, and what do I you say? I have a question myself. <laughs> um, so the question is, why is he here? Yeah. Oh, well, he's here because he's on the team, and he's, uh, he's shown that he can play at this level. He hasn't played lately. I believe there's a chance he'll play tonight. Um, it's not ideal to have an 18-year-old not playing every game. Um, he may see some time in the American League. Um, we'll see how it goes. He will, he will not be joining Finland for the World Junior uh, Championship. What have you seen in his development from the start of the year to now? Has it been, I mean, obviously in the early going it was a steady uphill, but has it leveled off a little bit? Um, well, w when he's not playing, I don't see improvement, but I've seen improvement from the start of the year. Um, and, you know, the last, you know, he's, I think he's squeezing the stick a little bit. Uh, he's had chances to score. The fact that he's in position to score is a good thing. Um, but, you know, when, when an 18 year old doesn't play all the time or he's playing limited minutes, and this is, a, this is an age old dilemma. I mean, you've, you've, uh, you have to balance the development at playing eight minutes versus 15 minutes or 20 minutes somewhere else. So I've had extensive discussions with the coaching staff. We're all on the same page on this. And, We'll see how it goes through uh, throughout the holiday and uh, throughout the Christmas holiday. But I'm happy with his development. Um, he's, uh, uh, it, you know, it, it'd be ideal if he was playing every game, but he's not. So we'll we'll address it as it uh, as it goes along. To what extent is the fact that he's dealing with a bit of a culture shock and make you guys want to sort of keep him here and sort of acclimatize him in North America as opposed to sending him down? Well, uh, you know, like. A little bit, and I think the language is, is a big issue. Like the, the the distinction between him and David Pasternak, who was in the same position, and we sent to the American League in Boston, is that David knew the language very well. So that's part of it. Um, he, I mean, he's a big, strong kid. He like every time he's played, he's he's made three or four plays, and the fact that he's in position to make three or four plays is is a is a huge step. So ideally, you'd like him to make those plays over a longer period of time each game. Um, but those are the circumstances. How are you guys helping him? Is he taking English lessons? Taking English, yep. Yeah. Living with an English person. Um, yep. Yeah. He, he, Jesse's a workhorse, too. I mean, he's, he's, he, he works off ice. I mean, he's like the fact that he's not playing every game isn't is mitigated a little bit by the fact that he's like, he works uh, on all levels here. Uh, he's in the weight room all the time, and and uh, uh, so he's helping himself out that way. We got an update yesterday on Darnell Nurse. Uh, maybe just the thought of you know the personal disappointment you have for a guy like that that made the strides that he had. And, uh, does the team need to potentially look at other options, or are you going to sort of do it internally with him out over the next few months? We're very deep at D. Um, and I'm satisfied with the D that we have here and in the minors to, to fill in. I think Darnell played a good role in the third pair and was developing. It's unfortunate that he got hurt and uh, that he'll be out that long. With, um, with McDavid, there have been a number of guys coming and going from that line. In an ideal world, is it a line that is static, that's a fit, that stays together all the time? Or is having guys platooning in and out of there based on who's playing well, is that, is that okay too? <laughs> There's no real answer to that. I mean, like we've 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 kind of treaded water here for the last month and a half, and and when that happens, uh, lines get changed, pairs get changed. Um, in an ideal world, you'd think your lines would be the same all the time. Um, that just that's, that's not realistic. So um, we'll see. You know who's who's up there next, and uh, Drake's acquitted himself fairly well. I mean. Um, so, um, really, there's no firm answer to that other than, like, things could still change. <laughs> Are you surprised with uh, the progression that Leon has made in his all-around game and his, his work that he's done in specific with face-offs and, and how he's taken on that challenge, perhaps a microcosm of the growth you've seen with him? He's, I think he's developed very well. Um, you know he's he's shooting the puck better. Uh, he's 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 better at faceoffs, as you say. Um, I think he's engaging more in battles. Um, he's still a young player and and still has to improve in in, in other areas. But I, I mean he's 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 
at times he's been a game changer, some of the plays that he makes. So um, to have that come out of such a young player and, and to know that he's a big, strong kid and getting stronger, uh, is, it makes you feel uh, not too bad. How do you assess uh, Gustafson's play when we have seen him and, and maybe just as well, uh, how do you feel about Talbot's workload to this point? I think Gus, Gus has been giving us uh, two good games and two bad games. Um, he's a good good person. Uh, he understands his role uh, as a backup when you've got a, a, a goalie who, as a number one who takes a lot of the net. Uh, it's hard. He's done it before. so. Um, uh, he knows where he sits in, in our goaltending universe. Uh, with Cam, um, I think he's played well. Um, you know, you know these, these goalies, and you see it uh, across the league with, with some number ones, like you have little dips, and, but uh, Cam's given us good goaltending. You had Nugent Hopkins with North America, and obviously his play was talked about there. Um, where's he at now compared to where he was at the World Cup? What have you seen from him? I think he's. I think he's. Um, he's not where he was the World Cup, uh, um, and for whatever reason, he's he's not there. And I know he can be there. Um, I, I I really liked his two-way play, and he's it's, it's not. And I'm not uh, unsatisfied with his play either. Um, I think there's players that can be better, and he can be one. But what he's given us, I've I've haven't minded, and and I know there's more because I've seen it firsthand. Um, so he's, you know, he's just got to get his confidence up a little bit. Um, he's he's caught in this in this grind right now, like the rest of us, and it hasn't been pretty hockey. And it's just the, a function of the the games and the number of days. The last 40, 45 days, it's been it's been a little mind numbing. I'll probably been a little mind numbing to watch too. Um, so he's he's in the in the collective group that way. Peter, so, I know you touched on Kajula uh, briefly. You brought him and Benning in. Are they giving you what you envisioned? Yeah, well, they're both playing in the NHL and they're contributing and they're both learning. Um, uh, Matt has been uh, um, a real bright light. I mean, he's a very smart player uh, and he's, he's getting better every game. Um, and he's got the mobility and the passing ability that really adds to our transition game. Drake, is, he's, he's a month and a bit behind just from the injury. And you see flashes and I know he'll, he'll get up to speed. Um, but happy with them both. Overall, the way this team's coming together, they, have they exceeded what you were expecting, or is this kind of on schedule for how you thought this team was going to be? This year? I, I'm I'm happy where we're at. You know, with you know, I knew the start wasn't uh, we had a you know good schedule to start. And now we're having we've had a tough schedule, so maybe we've settled to where we should be. Um, you know, I, I've 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 seen improvement in every category, and I, that's that makes me happy. Um, uh, whether it's the uh, the, the, the statistical stuff, or whether it's the, the what meets my my eye test uh, from the transition game and the forechecking game, you know the, this this like it hasn't been this grind hasn't been really entertaining, and it's been at times it's been a struggle. We but like we've harvested some points, and that's important in an 82 game schedule, and and to get your footing, and when we kind of right the ship when the schedule is a little better. I'm not putting it all on the schedule. I'm just saying. You know that's like Winnipeg's the same thing. They're in that they're in that grind, so um, it, it's I, I find that we're enduring it better than average, and that to me that you know this is a marathon, and so at this point that's okay. So at what point then? The other night, Paul Maurice came out and said my team didn't play as well as they can play because of the schedule. Todd McClellan said the same thing. You're saying the same thing. At what point do we get concerned about the product when we're running two teams out every night that are too tired to give you the best product? Um, at what point does the media get concerned with the product? <laughs> I would say the fans who are paying well, like, dollars to get in here and they're yeah. spending 60% sometimes. I, just, I think that the people have tough schedules, especially in the West, and that's been there all the time. So the answer, I don't have an answer to that question. Like, like I think the schedule it balances out, and that, unfortunately that's when you, you put 82 games in with a compressed schedule. It, it, that's one of the byproducts. I don't have an answer, Spec. What did you make of the, your captain's comments in Philadelphia last week? Did you like that a little bit? I, I like that Connor expresses himself. Uh, I know um, the type of person he is that for him to say that, it was very significant to him for him to actually say that. Um, 
I, I'm all for free speech. Um, he also has a role as a captain, and he's, he's done that quite well. So, um, you know, the, the, the stuff that happens in a game, um, um, and sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. So I, I didn't have a problem with it. Well, he, it, it, you know, not really. He, I know he's, he's got that inner fire. Um, he's, you know, as, as his career progresses, he, I mean, he, you can see now he's a target all the time. So he's, and he's been in that way all his life. So he, he knows how to deal with it, and he, he dealt with it as he saw fit, and I'm fine with it. What have you thought of uh, Chris Russell so far? And is there, is there a thought process about you know, extend an extension? When does that? When do you start processing that? I think Chris has been very good for us. We missed him when he was injured. Uh, he's that transitional type of D that uh, I think very effective on the uh, on the breakout, which is something we wanted to improve. Um, it makes us a faster team uh, when he's in the lineup. Um, he battles. Um, he uh, great stick, great defender, uh, uh, good leader um, in the room. Um, you know, at some point we'll we'll sit down and talk about an extension. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Thank you.